Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's lesson is a bit different from our previous ones. We will take the first look at a tool which is getting more and more relevant to Revit. It's called Rhino. We will see how this very flexible modeling tool can help you create amazing shape and design right in your Revit model. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this one every single week. So, what is Rhino? If you haven't heard of it, simply go to any web browser and search for Rhino 3D. That's the main website of the program. And as you can see straight away, it's very optimized to the modeling and analysis of very complex geometry. Previously, this is a disconnected program in relation to Revit. But recently, they have released a new version that allows Rhino to run inside Revit's memory space. This essentially has combined the two programs into something very powerful for any of your modeling needs. This new version is called Rhino Insight. We can also search for Rhino Insight. And this page is the official one. Essentially, that's what I have here in the background. So on the left, I still have the user Revit window. And then on the right, I have Grasshopper, which is the visual programming interface of Rhino 3D. Essentially, Grasshopper to Rhino is like Dynamo to Revit. They are so similar, you can even see in here. Grasshopper has generated in Revit a kind of preview that we usually also get with Dynamo. So why don't we just stick with Dynamo? The reason is simple. Grasshopper in Rhino is much more powerful. If you want to model something very complex, such as this 3D Voronoid pattern here inside this cube. To check out even more amazing examples, just go to your web browser again and search for Grasshopper Gallery. And then choose Photos Grasshopper. As you can see here, these are all the amazing design and shapes that the community of Grasshopper users have created. Some of them you can do in Revit, but some of them you just can't. Even for some of the examples, like this one here, you may be able to do it in Revit with a lot of effort. But with Grasshopper, it will be just much easier. And the flow of input and output can be much more flexible and direct as well. This is why I'm starting today a new video tutorial series to help you leverage Rhino Insight within Revit to do amazing modeling work that you didn't know possible within Revit itself. The first step is obviously making sure you are set up and the program runs on your machine. So let's see right now how you can install Rhino Insight for Revit. Firstly, we need to be clear that Rhino 3D itself is a separate program. For example, I have installed it already. So when I go to here, I can actually run Rhino 7 or Rhino 6. Let's go for Rhino 6 this time. It has opened on my other screen, and here it is. You can see there is a completely different program for 3D modeling of objects, but this has nothing to do with Revit. To make the connection between Rhino and Revit, you need to install a few things. Firstly, go to your browser again, and search for Rhino inside. The first page there should be the one to check out. And here, it's pretty clear what you need to install. There are two of them. Firstly, the Rhino Insight for Revit plugin. And secondly, Rhino 7. If you already have a license for Rhino 7, you can skip this second install here. For me, unfortunately, I only have a license for Rhino 6, this one here. And that's just not enough to run Rhino Insight Revit. So, if you are in my same situation, you either need to upgrade your Rhino 6 license to Rhino 7, or to do it for free, simply go here and download this free Rhino 7 trial. So, let's click on this button there. And it's going to ask for your email number. Let me put mine in quickly. And then click Next. Doing this will prompt Rhino to send a download link to your email account. Something looks similar to this one. So you will get firstly the link to download the installer and then a serial number or license code that you can use to start your trial. It's a three month trial, so pretty generous. You can get a lot of learning and modeling to do in that time. So let's click on this link here to begin. As you can see, it has started downloading my file there. When that's going on, let's make sure we close Rhino 6 and close Revit as well. So that has finished the download. I can now run this installer. 
Now, of course, because I have already installed it, it's saying here, Rhino is installed. But if you haven't, then you will see here nothing else but the next button or something like that. So click on next and then the next screen you see is this one. It's going to ask for the installation location. Feel free to change it if you have to. Otherwise, the default is fine. Language, you can choose one from here. But for now, English is fine for me. Something more important is how you will plan to license this trial. Because we have already been given a license code in that same email, I can now go here now, choose this computer, and I just paste in that same license key from the email, this one here. So paste it there. And then you can click on install now to finish this installation. For me, I've done that already, so I will just close this one out. Next step, before we even go into Revit, you need to make sure that Rhino 7 can run. Just go to Start menu, look for your Rhino 7 icon, and I will open it from here. You can see there, the clock is already counting down, but that's still plenty of time to try Rhino and Rhino inside Revit. Just a quick note here, the first time you open Rhino 7, it may ask you to put in the same license code again. In that case, simply copy it from the email and use it there. Once you've got it opened, you are ready to bring this all into Revit. So let's close Rhino 7 down. We go back to the website and now we can start downloading the Rhino Insights Revit plugin. This one here. Just like before, it's going to ask for the email address. I will use the same one now. And then click next. Download now, obviously. And now it's there. Feel free to run it now. Accept everything it throws at you and click on install. That's done now. I can click on finish. And finally, it's time to open back our Revit. It should work with multiple Revit versions you have on your machine. I'm just going for the latest just because that's my favorite. And here you have the plugin attempting to load into Revit. Yes, please. You can now open any Revit file, or for me now, I will just do a blank one. We can now see if Rhino Inside can run as expected in Revit. Just go to the Add-ins tab now, and you will see, in addition to your other plugins, there's another one here now called Rhino Serus. You can click on. Now, after a few seconds, you will see this additional tab on your Revit ribbon called Rhino Serus. And in here, there are different buttons to try. The most two useful ones are these. Firstly, Rhino. If you click on it, it will simply open the same Rhino 7 window we saw just before. We know it's the same one because here, that's the same number of days remaining on my trial. So essentially, when you run this plugin from the Add-ins tab, it actually opens a Rhino 7 window in the background. This is where all the advanced geometry manipulation and creation will take place before you can bring those objects from Rhino directly into Revit and create amazing results. One thing to watch out for is by doing this, you're actually consuming one Rhino 7 license if you already have paid for one. So just something to keep in mind if the number of licenses in your organization needs to be monitored. Anyway, to try Grasshopper next, I can close this Rhino window now. It's still there in the background, don't worry. For some reason, however, our buttons here in this Rhino Serious tab are grayed out. To make them clickable again, simply change to another tab, for example, Modify, and then change back to Rhino Serious. Here they are again. I can now open Grasshopper from here. Again, this is the visual programming interface of Rhino, similar to what Dynamo is in Revit. You can move this window around, or for me, I'll dock it to the side, and has Revit on the other side. The details of how to use Grasshopper and Rhino to create very exciting and dynamic objects in Revit, I will cover in our next tutorials. For now, just for a quick taste of what it does, let's open back our script that I showed at the beginning. To see the result in Revit, just go to the 3D view now, and there it is. All it does is create a box, or a cube in this case, and then generate a 3D Voronoi pattern to populate the internal of the box. As you can see, just like in Dynamo, you have dynamic inputs for dimensions here. If I want to make the box smaller, I can by sliding this number down, or maybe go up to make it bigger. I can also change the number of internal objects by editing this number here. 
for example let's go for few of them you can see there it's updating nicely or if i want to do something much more complex i can slide this one way up and it does everything for me from this geometry we can of course generate revit elements and even beam objects with all the required attributes and properties let's see how to do those things in our upcoming lessons for now to be the first to know when they come online make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell if you haven't for now make sure you have rhino and rhino inside setup ready to go and i'll see you in the next lesson